In this video, I'll cover the three tools in the PIC tool group, PIC, Freehand PIC, and Free Transform. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial. The PIC tool group is at the top of the toolbox, and I can see all three tools by clicking the small arrow at the lower right corner of the PIC tool icon. The PIC tool serves many functions in CorelDRAW, mainly selecting, moving, and transforming objects. In order to make any changes to an object, whether it's something simple like changing fill or outline color, or something more complex like moving or rotating, the objects must first be selected. So learning how to use the PIC tool is the foundation for pretty much everything you'll do in CorelDRAW. To select a single object, I'll activate the PIC tool and click once on the object. When my Objects Docker is open, or the Objects Inspector on the Mac, I can see what's currently selected. The selected object is surrounded by square handles, which I'll discuss a bit farther on. Clicking in blank space deselects everything. To select multiple objects, I can click while holding the Shift key, or I can drag out a rectangular selection marquee which selects all objects completely inside the selection area. If I hold the Alt key while dragging, all objects within or touching the selection area are selected. To select all objects in the workspace, I can drag a selection marquee around everything, or double-click the Pick Tool icon, or press Ctrl-A or the equivalent Command-A on the Mac. When multiple objects are selected, and I want to deselect one, I'll keep Shift pressed and click the object to deselect. Any changes I make will affect all selected objects, such as changing fill color by left-clicking a color swatch, changing outline color by right-clicking a swatch, adding transparency with the Transparency tool, or, as I'll cover more in a bit, moving, resizing, etc. A group is a collection of objects that acts as a single object. Groups are identified in the Objects Docker with an expansion arrow, which I can click to see what's inside. To select an object within a group, I'll keep the Control key pressed, or Option, on the Mac, and use the Pick tool to select individual objects within the group. When objects within a group are selected, the surrounding handles are circles rather than squares. In addition to using the Pick tool, objects can be selected directly in the Objects Docker no matter what tool is active. I can select an entire group, an object within a group, a consecutive set of objects with the Shift key, or multiple objects one by one with the Control key. The Freehand Pick tool works the same way as the Pick tool, the only difference being how multiple objects are selected. Instead of dragging a rectangular selection marquee, I can trace an irregular selection around what I want to select. Like with the Pick tool, if I hold the Alt key while dragging, Partially included objects are also selected. When multiple objects are stacked on top of each other, it can be tough to select an object hidden underneath. One solution is to activate the Pick tool and press the Alt key while clicking. We call this the Digger tool since it lets me dig down through the stacking order. I can also press the Tab key while the Pick tool is active to select objects one by one from newest to oldest. So, in this example, I can select one by one and choose a different fill color for each curve. Pressing Shift and Tab together reverses the selection order. When one or more objects are selected, a bounding box encloses the selection with an X in the center and eight black squares all around. These squares are called handles. When my cursor is on an object or on the X, it becomes a four-way arrow called the Position Cursor. Clicking and dragging moves the selected objects. To move the X to an exact location, I can enter X and Y coordinates in the Object Position fields on the Interactive Property bar. I can also move selected objects by increments with the arrow keys. This is called nudging. Pressing Shift with an arrow key moves by greater increments, or a super nudge, and with the Control key it's a smaller distance, a micro nudge. And for a quick way to make copies, I can select an object and move it around 
pressing the spacebar wherever I want to place a copy. The Pick tool can also be used for basic object transformations, sizing and scaling, stretching, skewing, rotating, and mirroring. Handles can be used for basic transformations, but for precise transformations, you can use the position and size fields as well. Corner handles are used for resizing or scaling. Side handles are for stretching horizontally or vertically. To mirror, I'll keep the control key pressed and drag a side handle to the opposite side. This flips an object by its side, whereas the mirror icons in the property bar flip by the object's center. When the pick tool is active, clicking one or more objects that are already selected displays a new set of handles. Now the corner handles are used for rotating, or I can enter a rotation angle. By default, the rotation is about the center of the objects, but I can drag the center point elsewhere. The side handles are used for skewing. I'll click again to return to the square handles, and when I click again, the center of rotation is back in its default spot. This works a bit differently when just one object is selected. If I click on a selected object and move the rotation center, then click twice more to toggle handles again, the rotation center remains in place, but I can drag it back to the center of the object. Snap points, such as center, node, or edge, appear by default because objects is checked in the Snap To menu. We've seen how objects selected with the pick or freehand pick tools can be moved, scaled, rotated, and skewed. For more flexibility with these transformations, I can use the free transform tool. I'll select the rotate text with the pick tool, then activate the free transform tool. There are four transformation options in the property bar, and I'll click free rotation. I'll click and hold the mouse at the center of rotation and drag to rotate the text around this point. With Free Transform, I don't have to start with objects pre selected. I'll switch to Free Angle Reflection, select the lower mirror text, and drag along this mirror line. To move this mirrored text, I do have to return to the Pick tool to select it. But here's a shortcut. While in any tool, I can press the space bar to temporarily switch to Pick, and now I can move the text. Pressing the space bar again brings back the tool I was using before, and I'm back in Free Transform. With free scale, I can scale in any direction or proportion relative to my cursor location. And with free skew, I can skew the object, press spacebar to go back to pick, click the text to get rotation handles, and rotate the text back down. For more transform options, I can open the transform docker. For the selected objects, I can use exact values to position, rotate, scale and mirror, size, and skew. All of the options can include making copies. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the Pick Tool group in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial.